Hello everyone, my name is Rory Neary from Data Spinners and today I'm going to talk to you about the if and switch functions. Most people will be familiar with if functions when they use it in Excel and so on, but switch is um, a little bit more unusual, but, but it's actually quite straightforward to use. So I'm going to dive straight in and we are going to take a look at uh, one that I prepared earlier. So what we've got here is a little drop down um, and we've got a number of items in it. So I'm just going to delete this just so I can sort of demonstrate me putting this together. So I'm going to go insert, uh, drop down, controls, drop down. Hopefully it'll call it drop down one, which it hasn't. No, it's called it drop down two. Uh, I'm going to rename that because my things down at the bottom refer to that. Now, this has got a drop down sample in. In fact, this is just a little wheeze here, really, to give yourself uh, mean that you can put in different items four, five, six, say, um, and that will give you a number of items in your list. Um, and then further on down, I've got um, I've got a, a label, and the only thing that's in that label, is, the only thing that's got is a formula to tell it what colour to do. So uh, that's my kind of here's one I prepared earlier thing. So the idea is that you hit a one, you get one colour, you hit a two, you get another colour. So looking inside the formulas themselves, um, if we look at the if formula, we can see if the selected value is a one, then do red. Otherwise, if the selected value is a 2 then make it blue and and that's exactly what it does it just goes between those two statements and that works the switch statement is um is different um so what the switch statement does is it always looks at this um the selected values it's, it is similar to the um, the if function um, but I guess that it only looks at one one field at a time, which which invariably is what you're doing anyway. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate how we get our maybe third and fourth. So um, let's say we think that um, we need another one of these. I'm just going to kind of, if I shift and press the enter button, then I get a few more lines. So I'm just going to pop a a few more in there. It's not like in the fact that I haven't got any commas in. Um, oh, and I don't have a comma in there. Now, what it doesn't like, and in fact, it's quite happy now. Um, if I go three and four, and let's say it's green and yellow. So this should. Oh yeah, and then you've got to pop another couple of brackets on at the end um, so now what we've got is a situation where we've got green and yellow happening but we haven't worked it for the the switch function so moving back onto the switch function the uh, the way in which that works is you're gonna pop the that down a little bit I'm gonna copy this down a couple of times um, we said three and then four uh, and then we're going to say green and yellow so but notice on this one we didn't have to add any more um, we didn't have to add any more uh, closed brackets and if you look at the formula it's just a little bit less wordy um, so personally, you know, if if you think that all you're doing is looking at, um, if you're looking at the same field over and over again, my view would be to use the switch function. So, yeah. So, and this is a demonstration of it working. Uh, one, two, three. They both go green, so they both do the same thing. Um, it can be a personal preference. Personally, I find nested if statements quite hard to understand. Um, and I think the best use for a, maybe a switch function is possibly when you're trying to filter galleries. Um, that can be helpful because the um, the response, if you like, can be how you're going to filter that gallery. So the red, blue, green, etc. You can make it do whatever you like. 
So, um, yeah, I hope you found that useful and uh, see you next time.